there. Yes, pastor, gospel artist, so many things in one. Thank you so much for making time. Thanks for letting me be. You're welcome. I see you on TV. <laughs> Now I'm here with you. Yay. <laughs> How have you been? Uh, busy. I have a concert coming soon mm -hmm. uh, next Saturday mm -hmm. at the Wash Pass. So I'm here and there trying to invite my friends so they come and support W to Zimbe. Yeah. Trying to we we meet in a tent. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we feel like it's high time. And what I know is music. So calling friends who love my music, Christians and Christians. Yeah. I take word out out there, ask them to come and Kuzimba Church. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Adding um, some busy. spice and fun to mm. it. Yeah, it is sing, dance, build. Yeah. So next Saturday it's gonna be it's gonna be boil and cover. All right. At the worst pass. Okay. Yeah. So guys, I'm here with yes, the youth pastor. No, <laughs> the young pastor. That <laughs> is it. Um, it's okay. At his age, he's yeah. actually 35 years old. Yes. And yes. Uh, it was my birthday on 8th August this very month. Oh, happy birthday! Thank you. And so you, know you just what? turned 35. Yes. You need to respect me more. I think I'm older than you. Really? They don't ask ladies <laughs> their age. But but just uh, not. I'm like your big sister. Okay. Hi, big sis. <laughs> Yeah, so you know what happened on my birthday? Mm -hmm. It's uh, we invited orphans and widows. Yeah. Yes. It it was it was put on uh, on on live wire on Spark TV, and widows and orphans and street children. Mm -hmm. About three thousand of them turned up. Uh, doctors in our church treated for free. Mm. People with business banks came and gave pe people gifts for free. So I'm so excited about my birthday and. Saying thanks to everyone who gave stuff, mm. um, bl Nakaso Blood Bank, people donated blood, mm. church wash pals members brought lots of gifts. Yeah. Uh, the, I can go on and on, but every service provider now that I'm on TV, the biggest voice, I want to say thank you to all the widows, orphans, street children, single mothers, and everyone, every journalist that covered it, and uh, especially service providers. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it was good to see an orphan or a widow go home with a gift, yeah. treated, yeah. and helped. You know, yeah. it's interesting, and by the way, we are seeking your views. We are live, hashtag Morning at NTV, live on Facebook and YouTube as well. If you have any question, anything you want to know about Pastor here, um, do let me know. I am actually, I have my gadgets here, so I'm monitoring your feedback, and he's here with me. Yes. Now, I like the way you do a thing. You're very confident. <laughs> <laughs> thank nice. you so much. Thank you so much. Nice. Now, let's get into that. You mentioned that on your birthday, you took a totally different approach to it. Yes. A majority just, you know, put up a bash and they wait to receive. For you, it was the other way around. You are actually giving out. And you have a special, you know, passion for orphans and widows. Tell us more about yeah, that. Yeah, because I'm an orphan myself. I don't have a father, no mother. Mm -hmm. But God has blessed me with so many mothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I call the first lady mom. I call uh, the king of, uh, the, the queen of Buganda, mom. Mm. I call the, the mother queen of Toro, mom. I can call and say hi, mom. Mm. So I, I'm no longer like an orphan, and I have so many other mothers that I may not mention here today. But uh, uh, when you grow, you get wiser. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's literally about two years ago that I said, you know what, I'm going to spend my birthday with orphans. Mm. That's what fills my heart. That's what fills yeah. your so heart. So no, 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 no problem somebody having a party for his birthday. Mm. It's worth it. But uh, just uh, as you grow, you get wiser, maybe. Yeah. You know, as you mentioned that, I'm sure many now want to know your life and how you grew up. Um, how did you become an orphan and how um, was life like for you? Especially yeah. now that you've scaled up to where you are right now. I'm sure the journey wasn't as easy but worth it. Yeah, we're not yet where we want to be, but we know where we used to be. But yes, um, life was tough. The wind was blown off my boat at an early age. At I, um, I think I was about 10. That's 1994. My mom died 1993. Mm. And um, what happened? Uh, I think it was HIV. Back in the day, people didn't really believe it was HIV. Thank God for Philly Bongoli Retire, mm. who started singing songs. He's the guy that came out. He was a superstar, like biggest celebrity of the time, that came out and said, "Guys, HIV is real." Some people used to think it's witchcraft from uh, from Tanzania, <laughs> you know, right. the rumor because people used to scratch themselves a lot, and uh, so everyone was like, "Hey, you know, doggo, you know, doggo." But Philly Bongoli Retire uh, broke the ice. He came and said, "Hey, AIDS is real," and he said he was sick, and respect to. Philly his family and then they started to show his story 
in schools. Mm -hmm. I, I remember I was in primary three. We used to see his story uh, somewhere in Masaka, Stella Maris. And uh, so my parents died. I think um, uh, it was tough. And uh, so I, Papa and Mama yeah, succumbed to HIV and AIDS. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. But uh, thank God for Good Samaritans. Since then, my life has been you know, uh, has been in different hands up to where I am today. And uh, so anybody has ever helped me someday, somewhere, you, yeah. you, you gave me school fees, I went, slept in your house, you, you gave me something to eat. Maybe I use this opportunity to say thank you and to tell somebody suffering out there, never give up. Never what was up. that pushing factor for you? Because now you started pushing your st you, you, yourself to make something out of yourself mm -hmm. at a very early age. Mm -hmm. I mean, at 19, you're al already pursuing music. Mm -hmm. At 22, mm -hmm. you founded your church. Mm -hmm. So what was that pushing factor for you? Especially looking at all these other factors that were telling you, no, 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 you can't make it. Mm -hmm. What was that inner voice? Where were you deriving uh, your yeah, When my dad was dying on his deathbed, he called me and he said... Uh, uh, that uh, most of my brothers were sick, but uh, there is one or two that were not sick. I wasn't born sick, uh, but most, most of my brothers were sick. And then he said, I want you to be their father, I want you to be their mother. I want you to be, when you grow up, I want you to take care of them. I didn't understand what he was saying because it was really, I was really, really young. But it made sense later. So I always knew I have to help my brother, I have to help my, my, my brothers. Because no girls were only brothers. So that, that thing of like, yeah, yeah, I have to be the father. <laughs> I have to yeah. be the, you know. And my brothers had uh, trouble with me because I always wanted to be the father. And they're like, who are you? I thought <laughs> you were just a brother. Yeah. And uh, two, um, you know the Bible says that three things should never leave a human being. Faith, hope, and love. That was my message on my birthday. Mm. To everyone who loves me, who enjoys my music, I tell them, help somebody. But uh, first, is it Corinthians 13, 13? Mm -hmm. But these three should remain. Faith, hope, and love. Right. This feeling that one day the sun will rise. One day I'll have my own home. One day I'll go back to school. One day I'll leave this sick bed and go back to work. That feeling that one day I can, I can be like you on TV. Right. That feeling, that, that, the soldier in you, everyone has got a soldier in them. Mm. This feeling of like someday, uh, someday the sun will rise. Someday I'll sit on that airplane. So once you lose that hope and that faith, that's when you start to die, when you're still alive. But it doesn't matter how sick you are. It doesn't matter as long as you can speak like Job, I know my I redeem and live it. Correct. That feeling that someday, someday I shall, I never knew that I would shake King's heart, hand. Mm. I never knew that I would ever meet the king and say, I'm honored, sir. I never knew that I would never meet a president. I never knew that I would never meet uh, a celebrity. I never knew that I would be on NTV one day. So at 22, you establish your own church. And mm. as you're speaking, it shows that you're deriving a lot of strength and inspiration from the fact that you're already a born again Christian believer of mm. God. Mm -hmm. Who instilled that in you? Because we know that uh, even the Bible says, teach a child in uh -huh. the way they should go, and uh -huh. when they're old, they will not depart from it. Uh -huh. So now that you're an orphan at that particular early age, who played that major role in grounding I, your spirit? Yeah, I didn't like, uh, I, I wasn't really, really, I wasn't really, really, really into Jesus thingy. Because I felt like everyone was dying, and I felt like if God is above, He's not really for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but someday at school, there was a fellowship. Is it primary, secondary? Uh, secondary school, because mm -hmm. uh, there's this guy who took me back to school. And uh, uh, in this school, at uh, this school, they are, uh, number one, they used to sing, and they sounded like they didn't have problems. It sounded like they didn't have uh, a retake or what. You know when you have fellow students, yeah. we all have the same issues, no school fees, or we are failing mathematics, or there's this hard paper, or there is, you know, life is hard even for students. But every time the students started to sing, every Wednesday evening, they, they used to sing and it sounded like they were the happiest group. Mm -hmm. Sounded like they did have problems at all. And I knew them. I knew some of them. Their mother was sick. Somebody was an orphan. But when they started to sing, they used to sing this song. Glory, sing glory, glory, hallelujah. Sing glory, glory, hallelujah. Sing glory, glory, hallelujah. When the Lord set me free. Mm -hmm. And you, we used to admire. They had a certain glory, a certain glory on them. And I'm like, I want to be as happy as, as those kids. They sounded happy. They sounded like when they started to pray or sing, 
they sounded like they were the happiest. They sounded like their problems were answered. So I started to be uh, taken by that. Mm -hmm. Two, there was a beautiful girl in that fellowship that, okay. that I used to like. Mm -hmm. And she kept saying, yeah, keep coming. Her name was Diana. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. I'm like, I like you. Yeah, keep coming, <laughs> keep coming. So one day, uh, a preacher came, preached about hell and heaven. Mm -hmm. Kind of dawned on me, started to wonder where my mom is, where my. Because there's a time when I wanted to take my own life. Uh, I, I felt, oh, wow. Yeah, there's a time when I, I lost hope. That's like I point. said, was when. Was it still in secondary? Uh, in, uh, somewhere, I was off school. That was 1997, then mm -hmm. 1998. I was. Life was. That year, that year was hard. And I even pray for somebody who's having a very hard year in Jesus' name. It's gonna be well. Amen. So I almost, I almost took off my, took, took my, my own life. So this guy, I watched a movie because I was a street kid. Mm. So we talk with him, you know, Chivu, where you see movies and yeah. Jack Chan and Jet Li. And at some point, you feel like you're the Jet Li. You have uh, your own uh, knife, you mm. know, your own jacket. You feel like. And then I watched a movie when some orphan died and uh, uh, rejoined with his family, reunited somewhere in a better life. So that movie got to me and I said, okay, maybe if I die, I'll see my mom, I'll see my dad, mm -hmm. I'll be. So that day I, was, I wanted to take my own life. There was a guy called Patrick. He came, gave me a hug, and uh, he, he, he took me to church. And he gave me some money and bought me lunch, mm -hmm. right there in Bomberon. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, Jesus took on my life. And, but uh, I didn't know. They, they brought me up on the stage and they said, hey, well, hey Wilson, you have to tell your story. So I told my story, but then it didn't have Jesus in it. Mm -hmm. It was a story of pain. It was a story of misery. But uh, at school, when this preacher called uh, Pastor Stephen St. Fuma was preaching and he said uh, about hell and heaven, it started to dawn on me. He said, if I died, where do I go? Right. Yeah. So it's a reality. It's a reality. There's so that's actually a hell and there's a heaven. Yes. And so when he said, who wants to give your life to Jesus? I was the one. Yeah. And I was always a backbencher. And all my friends said, because I was really stubborn. There's a time I went to my headmaster, Mr. Kirk, and I told him, you know what? He could allow me to wear a cap. Yeah. So even yesterday I went to wave. Eh? I still have this feeling, this heart for, you know, uh, DJ Masi and MC Cast, they called me to ask them Balao. Right. <laughs> Teaching, telling these people about this Jesus. So he changed my life. After now you found Jesus and you found a new direction, so to speak, an inspiration, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. Now moved into the music industry. Is it because you realized you had a talent? What was it for you? And also you moved into now becoming a pastor. What was it for no, you? No, 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 never. Why are you called? Uh, uh, no, no, no. I, was ne I never, yes, I was, but I never wanted to be a pastor. Never. What happened? Literally. I thought I was just going to be praying for people, pray with friends and mm -hmm. tell them my story, but not really, really becoming a pastor. Yeah. No, no, no. I remember one day this kid calls me pastor. I'm like, never say that again. I'll never be a pastor. But uh, like Messi wants to play football, or, or Baby Cool wants to sing, or Wilson, Wilson wanted to pray for people mm -hmm. and to sing gospel music. Mm -hmm. Everyone, like everyone wants something. You want to be here and inspire Ugandans, right. you know, and tell us what's going on. I, what, what was in my heart was, can we meet and open the Bible and pray? So becoming a pastor, becoming a celebrity, all that yeah. just came on the way, yeah. And your way of pastoring is quite different. You're saying that it's not about just remaining in church and waiting for people to come. Yeah. It's about going to where the lost are, quote-unquote. Yes. Yeah. So you actually go perform in clubs. Yeah, I invite, I, inv I even invite, you know, <laughs> I even invite celebrities. Mm -hmm. I invite uh, Mama Fina. <laughs> oh, huh? Yeah, our church is known for open doors. Like, come as you are, the door is open. Right. Yes, it's been a bit controversial, but I just want to make a warning to especially other gospel artists and maybe and pastors. Not everyone has been called to go to the club, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I even The pray. temptations are real. Yeah, they are real. So, you know, DJ Shu calls me, I'm like, you sure? You know, Masse calls me, I'm like, okay. Yeah. So it's good. Yesterday, even I was happy to see guys with their beards singing. I even posted it on my page today. Yeah. You know? mm. So this pastor, we're talking about him performing in clubs and temptations and, uh, of course, temptations being real. Yeah. Why is he not married? 
<laughs> I knew that was going to come. It's the most asked question. Yeah. Uh, but uh, simple. What keeps you grounded? Uh, number one, I am very busy. So you don't have time for the No, 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 no. I have time, but I mean that uh, my schedule mm. has been like my security. You understand? Two, I've been very disciplined. I don't be like in a room alone or in a car alone or something. Mm. So, but three, I had, uh, I, I, and now these days I talk about it. I liked this girl who, uh, and I loved her so much and at some point it didn't work out and it was really, really tough on me. So, my, so who broke whose heart? I, I think uh, it was me who wasn't serious at first, mm -hmm. but when I became serious, I think she had uh, moved, moved on, on and uh, that was tough. So it kind of slowed my slowed me down. So you've not healed yet? No, 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 no. I am healing bullet speed. Okay, all yeah. right, okay. Mm -hmm. um, as we wrap this up, uh, Pastor, I just want you to speak to a young person who I think is that is in that particular you know space that you were in, and often at the verge of you know wanting to take their own lives, feeling like all hope is lost. I want you to speak to them as we wrap this up. Camera one is your camera. Dreaming is for free. Nobody will charge you for having big dreams. Prayers are for free. Believing that someone above can make your dreams come to pass. Nelson Mandela, mm -hmm. this dream I have, I'm willing to die for. Mahatma Gandhi, Mama Teresa, Martin Luther Jr. Right. Uh, even Joel Kagutam Seven, in his youthful days, he went, he almost died for his dream. Uh, politics aside. Mm -hmm. So young people, don't just chase girls, don't just be busy trying to take things that you've not worked for. Have a dream. Okay. And I believe your dream someday, God above, will come to pass. Pastor, we wish you all the best. I wish we had all the time to just get into your life and um, maybe your future plans. Can I talk about my concert? Yes, please, one second. 31st August. Yes. We are, our church meets in a tent. Uh -huh. So I'm inviting all my friends, Christians and non-Christians. Please come 31st August. 20K and 10K, 1 million a table and 2 million. Okay. I'm going to sing my music from Kani to Wanaza. <laughs> yes. Thank you for the we opportunity. We wish you all the best. You're Thank welcome. you so You're much. So welcome. Will you visit us soon? Pardon? Will you visit us soon? Yes, I will. You should come for the concert. Okay, all right. All Thank right. you for the invitation. Thank you so much. Keep your views coming. Hashtag morning at NTV. Still keep your questions as well. He will look at those. Hashtag morning at NTV. Yes, I will. All right. That's it for the show this uh, Friday morning. Thank you so much for allowing us into your lives from Monday to Friday, 6.30 to 9 a.m. From myself, Malaki Villaudera, and the entire team that makes this possible, we're saying goodbye, stay blessed, make it work, and stay safe. Bye-bye. See you Monday.